Welcome, everyone, to the Completely Unnecessary Podcast for Tuesday, March 9th, 2021. Alongside Ian Ferguson, I'm Pat Contry. On the show today, we'll be talking about lots of fun stuff. Actually, a pretty light week, but shh, don't tell anyone out there. It's a very uh, light week. Talking about uh, Nintendo Switch Pro Rumors. Uh, we'll also be talking about some Polymega updates a little bit. Uh, an upstart Atari company, maybe? Maybe? Uh, the return of the scumbag cell over the week. Patreon poll. You know, you know it. You know, you know what's, you know what's hot. You know spring what break. Doing. You know what's going on. Ian, Ian, how's your spring break going? Is it spring break yet officially? I know. No, I, don't, I don't think it's spring break yet officially. I think that's end of March, beginning of April. But you are definitely in a spring break state of mind. I definitely. Am. I'm ready to go. You're ready to go. I'm ready, ready to, to go. Party. I, I'm, I got my jams ready to, to throw on. I got, I got my my suntan oil. My SPF 2, like they had in the 80s, which they literally had every Wednesday. You can see commercials like that. Twitch.tv slash country code. They literally had commercials for like SPF 2, which is like, don't put anything on it. You're baking the oil like it's, you're, you're actually giving yourself melanoma at that point. <laughs> SPF 2 is, I'm not kidding. Shit. SPF 2. Like, no, don't, don't bother under 10 or 15. Don't bother. Like, there's no point. Yeah. Sorry, Ian. It's all right. Uh, I, I, I don't like burning. So, where are we at now? What are we doing? starting this podcast i saw an article yesterday that made me very very angry well usually we talk about the weekend roundup but you can talk about something that made you very angry sure that's i mean that that might I, I don't do anything on the weekend i work um you want to usually cook and you do D D. I did do D&D. &D. Uh, New York Times released an article yesterday uh, that said that the best bagels were in California. Oh, controversy. <laughs> I was so mad. I was so mad. Um, I, I, I am... I am... Um, I can admit that lots of things that started someplace may have good versions elsewhere. But uh, anyone who knows me knows that um, one of the first things i will mention when it comes to food in california is that we cannot get any good fucking bagels out here there's pizza just, as well but yes there's just i've found acceptable pizza i have not acceptable. found i have not found acceptable it all bagels. comes back to the dough apparently yes. anything with dough you can't get right here yeah versus, well, it, versus it, it, New York, it, it's New true once it comes yeah. down to bread but i just it, it's just a slap in the face from the now, new york times from the new york times the new york times my voice is doing fucked up things the new york times <laughs> the new york times is saying that california is the best bagels and they're saying this because apparently there's a couple of like fancy bagel places in like san francisco let me tell you something the same with pizza just because you make something fancier doesn't mean it tastes better no this means it's more expensive and this with is pizza with burgers it all comes down to the core ingredients and this is why I got so angry. They're talking about like these three or four like places that are like good bagel bakeries. Okay, but I have to travel if I want to get those bagels. In New York, you don't have to travel. You can just assume. You walk the, down the street. You can just assume the bagel next door to you is not going to be absolute fucking inedible dog shit. <laughs> Is that a flavor? The dog shit bagel? <laughs> yeah, dog shit bagel. That's, that's the biggest. Is that, is, they, is, that, is that part of the everything bagel? It's the most popular they, they, bagel in California, they, they, the dog shit bagel. <laughs> yeah. You don't enjoy some of the local ones? No. Uh, not, like, not at all? No. Okay. No. Uh, the, actually, the one by me used to be okay. The, um, I, I, by, I will, by my old condo. The uh, bagels that they used at the, um, the, the co-op, they're okay. Okay, I've they're okay, it. but maybe, really, maybe, other than, other than that, maybe with like some special blend of co-op communist uh, uh, fucking. No, no. If they, if they were trying to sell me as fucking sprouted wheat bagel, we wouldn't be having this conversation about sprouted them being okay wheat. bagels. Okay, no, I'm not having a wheatgrass <laughs> rocking bagel, a crazy in wheatgrass bagel. No, they, a kale bagel. <laughs> okay. Actually, I mean, I like kale, but I don't think a kale bagel hey. would be good. Okay. Um, 
but uh oh that was all propaganda what was that eight nine years old kale is so good for you fucking it's it's a fucking root <laughs> i don't care if it's good for me like this it's is, okay it's bitter it's fine I, I i enjoy the way kale tastes it's a hearty leaf yeah but for, for like two years like oh Chewy. this is a super food you can live forever it's no, like it's, no it's like it, it, just fucking have romaine and spring no, some spring mix but it is the You're steak fine. of leafy greens it's got a good chew to it it's got okay a, a good chew okay. it's hearty it'll fill you up so let's not get into a salad dissertation anyway bagels etc anger new york times uh, uh back to you patrick so what did pat do this weekend Pat uh, watched the All Star Game. Before that, um, I watched uh, Coming to America, Coming to America. So that was a sequel to the 1988 comedy classic with Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall, um, where they come to America from the, the African country to find his bride, and it's great. You all know that they got the b- barbershop folks. I, I love the original where, movie where Eddie Murphy does two characters, Arsenio does one. And um, so they did a sequel, and I, I didn't know how, how this was going to go. This was coming out like a year ago. They, they, they finished filming this in 2019. Eddie Murphy was on Saturday Night Live in late. Uh, he came back and hosted December 2019. Seems, it seems like forever. Oh, is that supposed to be like the lead in tour in a few okay. months? So they push it back. Because I don't know if it's supposed to be theatrical or not. Thank God it was not theatrical. That's all I'm going to say. Because I would not have paid to see this movie. Um, it's, a, it's a strange movie. And it's easy to say it's an unnecessary sequel, but it's an unnecessary <laughs> sequel um it's really it's not just the fact that we're in a totally different world than in the late 80s but they tried to overly address that we're in a different world in the late 80s and a lot of it just felt just it just fell flat was there just too much of look how things have changed there was a good amount of that because you know there was also too many subplots so like like part of it is they come back to I'm gonna this is spoilers it's on Amazon Prime I'm never going to watch it I, I well, love the else. first movie I have no interest in ever seeing they, the second they one. come back to America for about 13 minutes to find the son and then he comes back with Leslie Jones mm. so basically Leslie Jones is, is the, the father is the mother of his basically Leslie Jones uh, rapes Eddie Murphy in 1988 the character okay basically rapes him they, they kind of loot it but she basically got him uh uh really drunk and hopped on him like they, they don't really address that but it was rape uh so they had a kid and um uh, come back to africa with leslie jones as the mother and the kid and it's all figuring out how to do your own thing at the same time he has three daughters uh prince akim has three daughters the the lead daughters it looks going to be like the, the uh the heir apparent she's she's tough like like uh akim and she's smart and but like the laws of the land of zamunda is that you have to have a male be king. So there's that, but then like they have some butting heads between the illegitimate son and her, but not that much because there's too much going on. And then it's all, the, the entire uh, underpinning of this is Wesley Snipes is the warlord of the of the African country next door and he sees Akeem as weak. So they need a real male heir or else they're going to get attacked by Wesley Snipes. So the whole time I'm watching this, I'm like, you're really playing fast and loose with the tone with, like, African warlords. There's They actually make a joke that I'm surprised no one got on that didn't offend me. It's hard to offend me with this, but they joke around with, like, children's soldiers. There's jokes about that in the movie. Like, Wesley Snipes is, like, going, okay, go back to your AK. And, and, we'll tr- and it's like, that's kind of really weird to see in a comedy movie. Yeah, like... I actually wrote. I don't talk about my writing a lot. I attempted in my mid twenties, late uh, early mid twenties, to write a comedy with an with a West African country sort of a, as a backdrop to it. And I won't get into it. Looking back now, I'm like, I'm, I should not have attempted that. I did like a rough first draft, and even I was uncomfortable. I was like, this is kind of weird for me to be writing about this stuff. Uh, t- to have that be like a comedic sort of. Um, uh, touchstone is like you have a warlord with with children and then it just didn't it didn't feel right and that's all i'll say about the movie the movie didn't feel right a lot of it and they brought back every single character from the original except for the one i always had a crush on which was uh, lisa's uh younger sister mm-hmm. i had such a heavy crush on her remember her mm-hmm. she's the one that really wanted akeem she's yeah. nowhere to be seen and she's the one i wanted to see because she was a great actress in the first one but they brought back um Everyone else basically came back. Even Louis Anderson gets a couple of quick moments. And I just saw that Louis Anderson is in it. I looked it up. Because somehow they bring that back in the father McDowell. They bring McDowell's to Zamunda. That's how they 
they play that in. Gotcha. And actually, the best moment of the film is Akeem having a heart to heart with just the father because the father gets almost no scenes. Mm. Uh, and there's a heart to heart. I'm like, oh, this is actually a really tender moment. I wish I saw him in the movie more. Otherwise, because it, there's just not a lot there. They bring back even um, the preacher and the, and the singer and. It's just like it's. It, I didn't need to see the the reunion of this. I just didn't see the, need to see the tour. I just didn't. Um, yeah, critical response. So uh, online, most of what I saw was like, eh, it's fine. Um, I just I I, do, I didn't I didn't see anything in the first. As much as I love the first movie, there was nothing in the first movie that said to me we need to continue this. We need no. A, it was we, it. That was it. The end. We need we need a sequel Fa- here. Fairy tale end. Um, the end. I don't want to find out that like Akeem, thirty years later, is, has like regressed in some ways and is sort of like not living up to the expectations of the character. You're like I'm, I, I don't like revisiting this stuff. I don't want to see the new John Luke Picard series. I don't want to see this stuff. I just don't have it in me to see this this stuff. No, generally I don't. I just don't. I don't either. Um, you can never go home again, right? That's the expression. As time goes uh, on, I really, really appreciate. Uh, movies that say what they need to say in an hour and a half, and, and we it. never have to hear from the characters again. That's like it. that's it. That's all that's I want. Um, I'm, I'm, I, you know, and I, and I know I watched a lot of the Marvel movies, but I am. Movie watching is something that is very difficult for me. I'm almost embarrassed to say that. It's weird. It's getting harder for me as time goes on really? to focus on a movie. Yeah, like the idea of sitting down to watch a movie sometimes like causes me like two li- hours, like, like literal anxiety. Okay. Yeah, like I just it, it's tough for me to do it, and I don't want to have to watch prequels and sequels i don't want to have to do homework to watch a movie oh, absolutely not i don't no, want no, anything no. to be a sequel what what the marvel cinematic universe did was unique but i absolutely don't want to see that adopted for anything else i don't want cinematic universes i don't even really want sequels i don't even want to well wandavision looks interesting but i i'm, I'm almost okay just hearing the spoilers with that because i know that's just setting up future movies that i'd rather just didn't like if I know it's just like a big setup, I'm not too interested anymore, because that's basically right. what the series is. It's a big setup to the future phase four and like two different movies. And I'm like, okay, it's not the end point; it's the beginning of it. I just don't. I'm not. No, into it. yeah, I, I get that exactly. It's like if someone's spoil. Right, it, it's not spoiling an ending for you. It's like someone spoiling the quarter, like the beginning of a comic. Right. It's like the first. It's like the first of a twelve issue miniseries. Yes, it's like having issue three spoiled for you, but you've got like, the rest of it. Yeah, I'll probably. I'll live. I have not actually looked into Wandavision, but I just can't see myself dedicating, looking at my schedule and then like being like, okay, I'm gonna try to get through this as well as the other things I'm trying to watch. No, I'll probably just read yeah. the the synopsis. I don't need to watch six hours of a setup to something that comes out next year, like a, like a year and a half from now. I just don't. I'm not into it. Maybe I'll watch it closer to then. Maybe I'll watch it closer to then. I don't know. But uh, anyway, so I saw that. I also experimented with the uh, razorless shaving cream. I forgot to talk about this. Talk about this last week. It's really two weeks. Uh, uh. So they sell like the depilatory cream, Ian. They sell like you know, like Nair for like yeah. women mm-hmm. put on your legs, and it's like it's a chemical thing that basically burns your hair off. There's a version for that for men and their facial hair. And uh, I hate shaving. I have very coarse hair. Like I, if I shave like si- like six hours later, you you almost can't tell I shaved. So I was thinking this could work. So I go on Amazon, I buy it. It's a four star rating. I'm like, okay, four stars. Let's try this. And I even got the extra strength one Uh for like coarse hair because I have coarse hair. So I try this cream. I put it on and I leave and leave it on for, it's supposed to be like four minutes. They said, don't, they say, absolutely do not go over seven minutes. They basically say, do not go over seven minutes. (laughs) You will die. Well, I put it on for probably six to seven minutes because you're supposed to put it on and you leave it. It said, put on a lot, you leave it. And then you're supposed to take like a moist cloth and you wipe it away gently. And the hairs, because it goes under, un, it goes basically straight down on your skin, and it takes, and it, it basically burns it away. Sure, you know, it's like it's chopping down trees, but you're burning them at, yeah. at the base. It, it was not working at all. I mean, I'm not saying. I mean, it didn't do anything. It didn't do anything, and I even let it grow out a, a few days to make sure that there was something to do to grab onto. To grab on, yeah, to, something to sink its teeth into. <laughs> and I, I was left with a pink face for like uh, for about 15 hours afterwards because it burns, and it did not work. So it didn't work with my hair type. My hair is too tough for for this uh, razorless uh, shaving cream. It's called. That's what it's called. I'm sorry. They don't want to call that. it male nair, basically. Mare. Mare. There you go. Mare. 
Um, I also watched the NBA All-Star game. It was fun. I text Ian. He doesn't respond uh, to me enjoying it. What day uh, was this? Sunday? It was Sunday. Yes, Sunday, Sunday. I was playing d and I told you I was doing that. You can respond to freaking, uh, I say, you know. Four-hour session, man. I'm at work until 5, and then I go straight into D&D until 10. It's a long day. All right. Well, when Steph and Lillard are <laughs> shooting half-court three-pointers like they're free throws, maybe, you know, just just hey, that's pretty cool, and you respond with a smiling face. I don't know. I was fighting tree creatures. Uh, so it was really fun. But what I came away with, uh, besides the All-Star game being fun, was um, the, the next day on the recap, they talked about this thing called NBA Top Shot, which is an NFT – which is the only term I literally heard in the past month of my entire life. A non-fungible token, which is, they did they called it something slightly different on the NBA show, but they brought in an NBA player to basically say, oh, it's great. Uh, you can buy these uh, these card packs and open them online. The first thing I'm thinking of, is, oh, this is like a loot box. So what they are collecting, NBA Top Shop, um, you are collecting short video clips of NBA players. Uh, some are limit. Some are more limited. Some are individually numbered. So you, you're going for the like it's a real baseball card. Like so you're going for the lower number. Some are like hologram inserts. But these are digital. These are video clips. Just you keep on your computer. But now you can trade them and sell them. And there's marketplaces built in where there's asking the high low. And some are going for like ten twenty thousand dollars. Keep in mind. These are video clips that you keep on your computer. So this is the new hotness. Ian told me this has been now with, with art for like the past year, is yeah. that people create these, um, uh, they, I guess they're blockchain technology. So an NFT, and, and, and I'm not an expert on it, but this is just what I've gathered from shit that I've seen from following artists. Basically a non-fungible token is, it's, it's a one-off. So you can mint, you can mint something as an NFT. So I can- Visually mint. I could draw a picture of my butt and I could mint it on the Ethereum blockchain. That's okay. that's the that's the that's the chain that it uses. And basically in the metadata it's going to say that this specific image associated with this tag, this is this is the this is the true one. This is the real one. The real image or video or it's this the is real it. thing. It's like Coca-Cola, it's the okay. real thing. And um, so basically now you own that art. Someone else can take a, a screenshot of it or whatever, but in the art world, they consider that that would be like a print as opposed to an original. Keep in mind that while I'm trying to explain this to you, I'm not saying this is a good thing. This is very, I, oh, I, sure. I, I don't think this is, but this is just what I gather. So once you own that, you can then sell it. You can sell it off. You, you can, you, you own that art, you can sell it. So my guess is that, uh, the, the problem with this is uh, it's extremely environmentally unfriendly. Um, the blockchain is currently, and they keep saying about how talking about how Ethereum is, uses processing power like crypto. Yeah, and don't don't get me I, I, stake of proof and stake of work and all that shit. I that I don't quite understand. Stake. Um, so what they're doing with these cards is they're basically taking these video clips and I'm guessing if they're numbering them they're they're either minting them as one-off video clips, highlights, etc. or they're taking the same video clip and minting it multiple times but calling it number one, number two, number three, number four like you said, numbering. So that there is some sort of ownership or something that people are, are um, associating with these. Uh, my thing with this NBA thing though is okay. So if you open a pack and you get an NFT for like a slam dunk, uh huh, and you're or steal or a block or what right, have you, and sure. you're supposed to own this, um, the idea of ownership here is very weird because this is purely in the means of you own this. They're making a market for something. They're literally just yes. making something up whole cloth. In it, it, like I said, I don't necessarily agree with NFTs, but the whole thing with with NFTs and art is you own this. This is yours. I sure. guarantee you that you don't own that clip of that player. Oh no, you don't. That's the NBA's the footage. Black. You can't. Yeah. yeah, you can't take them and be like, "Well, I own no. this clip." You're not going to be able to go to a, a sports website and be like, no. "You can't it's, show this. I own this." It's literally you buy packs. That, like there's a common pack which was like fourteen dollars, which is insane. Or if you're ludicrous, you can get the $200 digital pack of video clips to open, and hopefully you strike it big with the one that's you know a lower number. And they're going over this on, on this NBA show. And I'm thinking like I miss ludicrous. This 
He's not around anymore, Chris? I mean, he is. Luda? I just don't think he's as big as he wants. I always like Luda. Yeah. Anyway. Me too. So, um, it, it's nuts that... I'll probably come back in the next Fast and Furious. So, so, but it's nuts that we're, <laughs> we're in the... <laughs> Well, that's what he does. Yeah, that's true. He's like the little computer hacker guy somehow. That's what he does. Um, that was, no, the second... Now that was the girl now. They keep adding characters, like 17 characters now. Anyway, so... Um, but but this is nuts. I hope you're doing well, Chris. This is nuts that we are now in this stage of uh, crypto and game stonks and everything else where let's just throw money at anything and see what happens. And they, they even on the NBA show had to admit that, oh, there's an investment factor in here. Because like, they brought an NBA player, like, oh, this is for fun, me collecting online video clips. Yes, sure, it's fun. He's like, oh, you can go back and watch a guy steal a ball or get a layup. Right. Right. That's why people are doing this. Right. Not but, because uh, it's just another fucking get-rich-quick scheme. Not that it, there's literally a marketplace built into this. This is, again, an NBA official product. So now we're going to see NFL do this. We're going to see baseball do this. You're going to see Marvel do this probably in Disney and everything. And it's all so that a few people can hopefully uh, get rich. It's it's all gambling. It's all basically a lottery. Spend $200 and you maybe you might get that card, Ian, that's worth uh, ten grand. They, 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 this basically exists in the real world. You can go and buy old packs of cards. I talked about the 86-87 was Fleer basketball that has like all the rookies, Jordan, Ewing, Olajuwon. Everyone wants that Jordan. So you can go online and buy a pack of these cards uh, graded. They're like eight hundred or thousand dollars. With with the odds are you might get that rookie card, right? right. Jordan worth twenty thousand. So this exists, but the, but those are physical items. This is digital. This is why it gets more crazy. You know. Th- anyway, sorry. Like I can see the theory behind even crypto, but I see the non theory behind this. I just don't see anything. Plus plus there's there's this is directly gambling in terms of like packs of shit. I didn't, I didn't. I thought it was a joke. It, it was a whole segment for like seven seven minutes on this. Yeah, then they, then they opened it up. They're, oh, we're going to open a pack now. I'm like, this is what they what they went after YouTubers for, for their fucking, uh, their little, what the fuck was it, CSGO shit. Remember that? Mm-hmm. I saw an NBA show on ESPN do the same thing, in essence. Oh, you won this card, uh, Kendrick Perkins. This is going for 10 grand in the marketplace right now. I'm looking at this like, this is legal? What they're doing on TV right now? This maybe is legal. Maybe not for long. <laughs> I mean, maybe not. Maybe it won't be legal for long. All right, that's all I'm going to say about that. So, Ian, we had we had some. Uh, we don't talk about rumors too much on the CU podcast, but this one is coming from uh, Bloomberg, the, the source you can trust about uh, the potential super switch. Yeah, like a week after you told me that they weren't going to do it. I never said they weren't doing a super switch. I just didn't think it did make sense to come out this year. Um, yeah. What? I think it will. I think it will come out this year. Uh, and for the record, you said it was going to be part of the direct. That, that was the thing. You said it's going to be part of the direct. And I said, no, I don't think so. You're like, my whole point was that it would be up by the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I mean, I still stand by it. They, they, they love to iterate their hardware. They, they don't need to, but they can, and they can get more money and more people excited well, they, about they, it. They iterate their handhelds, and that's why this is a weird case. Well, the Switch is a weird case because yes. it's partially a handheld. They don't, they don't iterate their, their N64s, and you know they do their mini Super Nintendos and... What they did an entire run of colored Nintendo 64s. That's not different hardware, Ian. That's that's like that's like the Game Boy Play It Loud. That didn't do anything. Okay. Anyways, this is um, so the rumor is that basically uh, Samsung has been uh, tapped to do uh, 720p OLED screens uh, with 4K dock support for a switch pro whatever we're going to call it um i believe the new screen is said to be seven inches the current one i think is six point (laughs) i think the current one is 6.2 inches or something along those lines um the 4k output is big uh 720p oled screens are gorgeous if you've ever used uh, especially an original it would be an original model um vita the colors that it pumps out brighter are, are they're very yeah they're very true colors um very bright and clean colors don't go Cindy Lauper on me uh, see them true colors. so what are you looking for Shut. I'm gonna raise the volume again I'm a little bit lower than you still okay um so yeah this is likely going to come out in time for Christmas if they're uh, the order is rumored for June or July and that's for, for the delivery date of these screens yeah oh, for the delivery to, to Nintendo or wherever their warehouse is, or whatever, or whatever, where they're putting them together. So if you if you look at that, 
if you surmise that, well, the rest of the hardware is ready, then they can start compiling them and maybe doing the, the final testing, put them on the boats, and then maybe you have them what, late fall or so, something like that, depending on where they're... We, we don't know how... Here's the thing. We don't know how far along they are with everything else. This is just, well, these are the screens we're using. Sure. We, don't, we have no idea where everything else is. So, I mean, it, it could be end of this year. It could be. My guess is that they will probably try to time this to be out around the time the new Zelda comes out. Um, I personally didn't think the new Zelda was going to make it this year. They when, when they did that last Direct, they were talking about how uh, they didn't have anything to show and that they would show something later in the year. Well, that told me that were, it's going to come out because it's like, we're going to show... Nintendo's not going to say, we're going to have something to show you and not show you... S- something you know so I mean? like, well right so i don't i didn't think it was going to be out in time for christmas i figured it would be closer to march um but i think they will try to time it with the with the switch pro and i think i mean other I'd say this is gonna be the 4k zelda that you always wanted right basically. and then i mean looking at what they've announced so far you know they still need something big for christmas i think this fits this would be their big christmas product this in new zelda yeah so my argument was they don't need a new big product because there's they you, they can't keep these on the shelves uh, the switch they just can't so w- you can you can ho- you can hold it off another year um but it's an interesting i guess it'll be interesting because i never bought the i never bought uh one of the uh you know the, whatever the 1.5 switch with the better battery i didn't bother no neither did i specifically okay, because i felt like something like this was going to come down the line at some point but i don't need this necessarily because i don't play handheld that often and i don't have a 4k tv inside my house so for me un- unless they're going to make a line of games that are just on the Super Switch. I don't think they can never do that because they've sold way too many of the original No, they're not going to fracture their base that much. So I don't need this item. I just don't. I I guess you can say, well, may I sell my Switch and get like a good chunk of it back and then upgrade. But again, if I don't have a 4K TV, you know, I'm fine with my 1080 right now. It's it's what I've had now for like five years since the the, the saga we went over about the, remember the other one? Yeah. Um, (laughs) So I'm fine. So then it comes down to, to me, you know, what is this going to cost? What are they going to do? It'll be four and a half years. If this comes out by December, that'll be four and a half, almost five years, oh my God, since the original Switch. Um, is it time for a price drop on the Switch? Drop it at 250 So then this slides in at 300 Or you keep it at 300 and the, and the Pro is 350 or so. Uh, what are your options there? And I think if I was Nintendo, I would drop it to 250 the regular Switch, because then you have three products. You have the Lite at 200 250 and 300 and you give people a choice. If, you know, if you don't need the 4K, then you stick with the 250 or, or you know what I mean? That's, that's cleaner, but I don't know. I'm not Nintendo. I don't, I don't remember what Nintendo's ever done before. Like, I was, I don't remember, like, when they came out with the Game Boy uh, Pocket, what they did with the original Game Boy price, or excuse me, the Play It Loud series game that they did back then that was just a different colored case, much like the N64 shells that you referred to. So I don't know, like, when they dropped the price, like, they dropped the Game Boy's price. I do remember that because the Game Boy Pocket came out in what ninety six, mm-hmm. ninety five or so. Uh, so it was it was a while afterwards where they did that. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I guess I guess we'll see, we'll, and we'll see if this will be gangbusters or it'll be like, well, you know, it, it's it's not enough of an upgrade for most people like me. Like, is this something that you be okay? I'm I'm dead set. I'm going to get this because you play a lot of handheld. Yes, I like games. OLED screens. I don't have a 4K TV. That's not my my reason for looking into it. But I like the OLED screen. Then, um, I'm assuming better battery life. I got I, I got to run the pat math because a pat math on a screen percentage is not just running the numbers. It's, it's, it's something more than that because it's it's a whole area. So numbers, yeah, I'd be zero. interested, and I know Vani is looking forward to it because her switch is starting to get loud. Start, it's pl- trying to play it loud. Where? Yeah, it just it 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 it, it um, the fan is very loud on it at this. Can you point. get you air? Open up, doing a little air air guy. <laughs> no, it, it's going. It's 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 on its way out. Okay, so I'm on, I'm on DisplayWars.com. You can compare uh, sizes: six point two versus seven inch on a wide screen. Uh, percentage wise, where's it? Give me a percentage. Just give me a percentage. Okay, here it is. It is. Um, Twenty-seven point four seven percent larger area. That's significant. Yeah, my guess is. I mean, so if you, my guess is that they're probably going to try to take the screen to the edge of the system because they can't necessarily make it bigger. Otherwise, suddenly your Joy Cons aren't going to fit. But there is unused space on the front of the Switch. Well, they, well, they can redesign the whole thing though. You're, you're buying a whole new Switch, so they could redesign it if they want to. Just keep the sliders the same on the sides. I'm just saying it would look weird. It would look weird, be a little bit wider. Like they that, would like be they wider. would be smaller. If it's, I mean, screens 
Oh, it's, I see what you're saying. Yes. They, they wouldn't, it, it would be a little bit more surface I area. think they're just going to try right. to take the screen to the edge. Yeah, otherwise there's going to be... The center part is going to literally physically be bigger than the Joy-Cons. Okay, that makes sense. It'd be kind of awkward. Yeah, so, it'd be so, weird. So then you're gonna have a, you're gonna, each house is gonna have two docks potentially. If you if you buy this as well, you have your 4K dock and your 1080 dock. You know, um, it'd be interesting though if they if they kind of sell it well. You're you're you know Breath of the Wild didn't have the greatest frame rates here and there. Maybe that'll play better on it. They'll sell that. The, you know the upgrade because 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 we're talking about we're talking about that this was it. They're changing their chipset as well. I hear for this right. Yeah. So this would be a much more powerful chip. Five, five, six years later, from when they, they first locked down the original, so it'll be interesting to see what the enhancements potentially are with some of the older games. Um, I just played through Super Mario 3D World, um, beat that, and then I did Bowser's Fury, and not a lot of people are talking about Bowser's Fury. Bowser's Fury was fucking fantastic, like really, really good, um, but it chugged at certain spots. It's it it's it, it's an open. It's it's the first, I guess, truly open world. Mario is how it plays oh. and it it when it's when you're like looking into the horizon or you know and you're seeing like you know fixtures in the distance it really chugs when you start to move around and then it 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 it, it gets back to being smooth but um yeah playing that was also something that had me thinking they've got to be working on something because now they're starting to push the limit but yeah they're, they're, they're starting to but Nintendo themselves is starting to program beyond what what the switch can handle okay so there, there you go that's going to be the that'll be the new hotness this this holiday and uh you know also this is the new hotness in ultimate nintendo.com where you can buy certain nes and super nintendo guidebooks enamel pins rbi baseball stickers and more is that the new hotness or the same old hotness the hotness that you know and love it's the hotness that never never leaves you just like eternally a, spicy, it's like a California bagel. It's mm-hmm. always piping hot, ready for you, ready, right? Ready for my anger. Um, and vitriol. then, like I said, I'll be on, uh, I'll be on Twitch every Wednesday night. Twitch.tv slash country code, and uh, cameo.com slash pack country. I, I did um, a couple of birthday shoutouts the past week, and a wedding anniversary as well. Nice. I mean, when you say it like that, it's like you're actually doing it. You know, I'm actually, I'm, not, I'm doing the wedding myself. No, <laughs> you don't actually show up. Frank, Frank might get on cameo. I will he- help him set up. Ian, Ian is on the fence. We'll see if Ian gets on before Frank. That'll be an interesting moment. Yeah, a moment. Uh, we're gonna break the internet with with Frank on on cameo. I'm gonna have to, I'm, I'm gonna have to, unfortunately, I might have to like come over. And, hey, Pat, I got a cameo. Come on over and help me do it. I hope that doesn't happen. It's definitely what's gonna happen. So like, it would be my front door. Eh, Pat, how do I do this thing? I'm like, it's, Frank, it's like you're taking a video. That's all you're doing. That's, 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 even you can handle that. He's actually pretty good using like search functions on his phone and. Yeah. He hates computers because he hates like passwords and stuff. Not realizing that you know there's passwords on this stuff as well. But sure. He he let, he figures out the phone, but he never figured out the computer. I tried. I I I I showed him. Trust me. He was cursing at me learning the computer. He was cursing at me. Little Nemo. Little Nemo. There's a Kickstarter right now. Little Nemo and the Nightmare Fiends. Little Nemo is back in the news with this Kickstarter. He's back in the news. Back in the news. We haven't seen. We haven't seen nor we're, heard we're, from uh, Mr. We're, Nemo. We're, we're canceling Little Nemo. That's in what, quite some time. He's we're done some bad stuff. Little Nemo. He did some bad stuff. I heard. No. Nemo has done nothing. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this Kickstarter is for a new Little Nemo platformer. This is interesting because the original comic uh, by uh, Windsor McKay. Um, had gorgeous artwork, was very, very uh, inventive, I guess, very interesting to look at. Um, and it's 120 years ago. Yep. But it was really, really like interesting for the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, nice thing about it, it's public domain. So uh, people are now uh, making a new platformer for it using the same style of art that was in the original comic. Um, you can check out a trailer for it now. It actually looks really nice in motion. I think some of the segments look a little bit better than hand others. Drawn. Um, yeah, it's all hand drawn, and it looks like it's going to um, also kind of uh, utilize that the different characters that are in the comic, all of them having uh, you know uh, different skills that can be used. So. I would be surprised if it doesn't play a little bit like the little Nemo NES game, but instead of jumping into different costumes, you use different characters to get around. Uh, I, so it looks it looks good. I spoke to the uh, the director of the game, if you want to say, Chris, uh, very nice fellow, and um, he obviously loves he loves the original comic strip. And I the one thing I asked him that okay, this is make or break for a lot of people. 
is there is this referential to the NES game? Since a lot of people don't know Nemo besides the NES game, a large amount of people are talking about its property so old. Um, he said, "Oh yes." So you look in, in the, the trailer, how he jumps is how Nemo jumps. Yeah. In, in the um, in the NES game, and then you see the giant frog, which could harken back to the frog character, the original. And it sounds like they are going to keep some of the NES elements in there for you. So there you go. If you're fun, if you like the NES game. This, uh, there'll be something here for you. Oh, yes. Four characters that you'll be able to play as. Four switchable characters. Nemo, Princess, Flip the Clown, and Agile Royal Guard Peony, an original character created for the game. So, yeah, they have all different uh, powers, and you switch back and forth, it looks like. Uh, yeah, the, the artwork looks looks beautiful. It has, like, an otherworldly sort of look, which goes back to the comic strip, because the comic strip is, it, you know, was kind of otherworldly. Obviously, you're dreaming, so. All right, well, yeah, show it some love if you, if you like what you see. Uh, it's on Kickstarter right now, and there's like about three weeks left on it. Hopefully, hopefully it hits the goal there. Uh, all right, we have a, we have an update as well. Update. Uh, slightly on the Poly Mega. Um, tweeted at me, and then there was a Nintendo Life article that there's some uh, surprise. There's some potential issues with the Poly Mega. <laughs> so, um, first, their California business license got suspended. And when we're with Ian on the phone, what that could mean, they didn't pay for something. That's what they, they came out and said that right. they, something didn't go through. Like, you have to pay your – every year, if you have an LLC in California, it's ridiculous in California. It costs way more than any other state. Don't don't don't, I won't, don't get me started. You pay a franchise fee and a franchise tax every year. Uh, one is a payment every year. I always get confused. But the tax is $800 a year no matter what. You have to pay that. So they either didn't pay that. If they didn't pay that or it didn't go through – so it got suspended, but they probably can pay it anyway. It's obviously unprofessional for companies big not to not to pay that and get that sorted out. But that's what happened. That's not the concern. The concern now is that there's issues now with rep- uh, reports that um, uh, there's a delay in production. Uh, according to this, reports from due to the ongoing civil unrest in uh, Myanmar, uh, which I'm guessing there, there, there's trouble there. There's, it sounds like there's trouble there a lot. Um, so. It sounds like that the parts were made somewhere else and they were getting flown to Myanmar f- to put the consoles together to get them back here. So this uh, is this is Playmaji's uh, uh, comment. Play- Polymega is still shipping, but it's coming out slower than expected from our Myanmar factory due to the protests that are happening. The modules and controllers are made in China while the console is assembled in Myanmar. The timing is changing daily, which is why we haven't announced anything concrete yet. We are still on track to ship everything here over the next few weeks. So you, you hope that this is the, the one mold and you give them that, okay, you can't account for some civil unrest and you know, I don't know what's going on in the news there. I, I, I look it it's up. It's not one mulligan. I mean, this is. I know, uh, but like, it, I know. <laughs> I mean, it's it's I, been it's been excuse after excuse after excuse. Yes, I hope they wouldn't be using civil unrest as an excuse. But if there was one excuse to give them, I would give I would yes, give them this. Sure. What's going on right now? If, if you, it, it, it used to be Burma, by the way, if you're not familiar with it, they changed the name whatever the past 20, 25 years in Southeast Asia. Um, let's see. They're cracking down on the media. Uh, you know, it's always it's always always fun times. Uh, Myanmar party official dies in custody amid torture allegations. There you go. You know, the army cracking down on stuff. Yeah, it's always fun times. So um, yeah. So again, this is again why it's so dangerous to see these uh, reviews, early reviews come out and early saying, "Oh, this is great," when no one can get the fucking product. I mean, I'm glad this guy, uh, I'm glad Damien McFerrin is, is commenting on this, but this guy has been a huge proponent of the Poly Mega, and he has a, a review unit that he's been sitting on, and... Uh, not literally sitting on, but... Not yeah. sitting on, but this you, you this is why you have to be careful with that shit. Just yeah. because they're treating you special doesn't yes. mean that it's the experience for everyone, and it doesn't matter if you love the product you have if no one else gets it. It's easy for them to it cobble. It doesn't matter. They can cobble together 10, 20 units and get them out to influencers way before the... Because some of these influencers, this guy's had this for like at least six months. Everyone had theirs in the fall. It sounds like August. 
uh, September. They had theirs. Just wait so. for this shit to come out and be in people's hands yeah. before you decide that you're going to make your entire brand the Poly Mega or the Intellivision Amico or something like that. Wait until it's actually produced out. or produced, and you know it's produced. There's evidence that hey, it's on it's on the ships. It's coming because over. Because I'm not saying yeah. this is going to happen, but if Poly Mega just disappeared appeared tomorrow and no one got this unit, this is going to be this dude's legacy. Is I mean, it, it, maybe not the entire not legacy, legacy, but but it's going to hang around his neck. The, the fact that he was a big proponent of the poly mega and talked it up because people in the comments on antenna life are coming at him a little bit saying like why are you why are you covering for this company basically at this point so you become a mouth you can like the product but you got to be able to come out and be like this look people people too often think liking a product or being into a product also means that you have to defend everything else about it no you, you can like it. it. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm the thing. Like, if you come out and say I like this product, but this company is shit, and this is where they're fucking up, I'm actually more likely to agree that the, you really genuinely like the product, and there's something worthwhile there. If you can actually look at things as they come. One of the comments says, also kind of suspect that Play Meiji uh, speaks to no one except for Nintendo Life. No, it's mm. true. Emoji. They don't talk to fucking anyone. They don't have. They they don't say anything on their Twitter to so, their customers. But but Nintendo Life can get a comment. So you have access, basically access Such media. Journalism. Yes. When the customers don't know what the hell's going on, the Twitter account. I get on the Twitter account all the time. The Twitter account doesn't communicate anything to anyone. Right. And that's like the public face for all, all these companies is Twitter because almost everyone's on Twitter more so than Facebook or Instagram. You communicate on Twitter. And you go to the Poly Mega Twitter again, again. This is ABC stuff of running a company and communicating. Um, you go to the Poly Mega account, and um, what do you what do you have here? Uh, nothing, nothing. It's been uh, five, six weeks since they tweeted about the Sindin light gun pre-orders. And then just before that, it was the Walmart is falling apart thing, which is also weird. No one seems to be talking that about was, that. That anymore. was like the last major thing they communicated yeah. on their Twitter was that, and then they talked about. Uh, the uh, Sindin light gun pre-orders and people people ask us at the time about it. hey you think it's right for them to be taking pre-orders on the, the, the light gun when they haven't delivered and they're like what two years late on the consoles like no it's as apps absolutely it, it, it shouldn't happen uh you know it, it's buyer beware until you put out a fucking product and get it in people's hands and you've never done it before there's no there's no benefit of the doubt that's the big thing too is like you right when you, for all the shit we've and i've mentioned this before but for all the shit that we've talked about analog and their customer service and things like that i feel comfortable being interested in an analog product because they've delivered before polymega yes. has never done this before no they haven't the Amico has not done the in television has not done this before no. there's literally no evidence of this being a success for them and again a video game console is not like putting out a cd it's not like putting out an album or a, even a fucking movie. It's like the hardest thing to put out. It's like the hardest thing to put out. That's why. And I mentioned it, and it's it's the same thing with the Poly Mega as it is with the Miko. I mentioned this uh, a few times before. A lot of these companies now are acting like getting the system to launch is the finish line. Sure. That's the start. Yeah. Then you got to think about the support the lifespan of your system, the updates, something like Polymega, gen gen I mean, does have it easier. They're running older stuff. But you still, they still have to update, update firmware, Yes, bugs on games. They still have to do that and support their servers. They're, they're going to have an online store. Yeah, yeah, it's the beginning of the ecosystem. Right. The beginning. If the, if the Switch came out and then within a year they dropped support, you wouldn't say it was a success. The Wii U is seen as a colossal failure and they supported the Wii U for, what, three and a half years before they basically said we're done with this? That was a colossal failure. And it's, the the yeah. Atari VCS is out, and now that it's out, we're not hearing anything about it. Like they keep saying that the official launch is spring, but we're not hearing anything about it. There's nothing happening to it, and I think so many of these units, they took so much money and so much effort to get them out that they're the, these the VCS, the Poly Mega, um, the Amico. These are things that I feel like are going to come out, and that's that's it. That's that's going to be the end of it. I, I I don't think these I don't think any of these companies looked far enough ahead to actually have a game plan for after release. What to do with it once it's actually out in people's hands? Well, you stop making money once it's out in people's. Hands. I mean, like like some of these companies, like if, if this comes out and Poly Poly Mega is in trouble, um, if because if once this comes out, they still got to probably sell more in order to keep their company afloat. Oh, that's that's also yeah, they're, they're, um, they're in trouble. Like if the Amiga comes out and delivers the first whatever ten thousand, twelve thousand, they're in deep trouble. They got to still sell and spend money on advertising to sell more and, and producing. They're in trouble. Like either way, like this is this is not 
fighting games. If this is serious, you better have your shit ready to go when you're coming out with a video game console. This is not, again, this is not like any other product that we're, we talked about. It's not, it's not even producing a video game. Producing a video game doesn't have nearly the overhead as doing these consoles. You do a, do a video game, you have a team, uh, but if you don't do anything physical, I mean, yeah, you, you pay for certification maybe and things like that. It's not nearly the cost and trouble of, of doing these game consoles. Not even close. We're talking magnitudes different here. I'd rather put out freaking Igloo fucking uh, lunch, lunch containers and manufacture those than doing a video game console. I'd have more success doing that. Or a fucking suitcase chain. Anyway, so yeah, I hope, I hope, again, I hope people get their product. I'm just looking through some of these. The comments these, are not these comments, but I'm lo I'm looking at this one that. Um, yeah, I sell your soul. Also, kind of suspect that Play Maji speaks to no one except for Nintendo Life, and then uh, Damien responds. Other outlets and indeed anyone who cares to visit their website have their email address. Not our fault that none of them bother to ask for comment before leaping to conclusions. Again. And there's so many parallels between these when I talk about why both of these are are, are doing so poorly, but um, it's not it's not a consumer's res responsibility to do all like yes, research what you're buying, but the companies have uh, an obligation to communicate with us. Yes, absolutely. We shouldn't have to guess about, about I shouldn't have what to the product e right. has or not. Yeah, I shouldn't have to email them to find no. out why they said that things or, would be shipping at the end of or, February, but I haven't gotten a confirmation. Or sit through a fucking awkward three-hour podcast with the CEO of a company to get like a, a, a fucking 30-second soundbite. Yeah, and get something wrong and then have you know the, the CEO tell you that you have to go watch this video and this video. No. No, I just, don't. I have a life. Just, Sorry. Just fucking make quality... Uh, Communication? Content, yeah. PR? PR, co co yes. Come out. Make quality PR. Put it on your website. Remember that was the first thing about the website. I said the website knows, has no information on it, Tommy. And that's, what, and that's when I was trying to be nice. Like, I said, your website, your website has no information. You're telling me he, you need insider info. He literally said you need the insider info in order to understand their product. Then you are doing a shitty job uh, as a company if you do not communicate clearly what the fuck your product has. If I came out with my book, Ian... And didn't say, oh, by the way, we skipped the letters uh, N through S. That's not on the consumer. That's on me not communicating. I skipped a bunch of shit. You I, have to communicate everything about your product before it comes out. Yes. I should be able Ian, to I go. don't like platformers. There's no platformers in the Super Nintendo book. I just, I just decided not to do it. It's on you, though, for not realizing that. Yeah. Would you be pissed about that, Ian? No, no Adam's family? Yes. I'd be so upset. <laughs> so One last comment. I'll go over this. Because there was, there was a quote in this article... What a roller coaster ride the Poly Mega has been. The response from Cleveland124, yeah, if the roller coaster had one hill when announced in 2017 for release in February 2018, and then was one long roller coaster going down. Yeah. Here is a quote from the initial Nintendo Life article uh, that he puts in here. For the people who are speculating $300, it won't be nearly that much. No, it'll be more. <laughs> it'll be more than that. It'll be four hundred. Four hundred and fifty dollars is what the but base before, before base the modules. Unit. Yes. Yeah. Four hundred and fifty dollars is what the base unit is currently costing. Oh God. All right. Real, real quick, we'll finish up this uh, intro about our buddy, um, the Justice League movie. Our buddy Zack Snyder. Uh, it was leaked, like the first hour and a half. So, so supposedly. It's on a ledge. It was on Twitter before Warner Bros. took it down. If you had ordered the Tom and Jerry movie... That's what I heard, yeah. It's got bad reviews, unfortunately, and I love Tom and Jerry because it didn't focus on Tom and Jerry. Um, instead of watching that the cute, uh, lovable combo mouse and cat, you watched uh, an awful CG for an hour, hour and a half, and and, also, uh, and Jared Leto, uh, Joker Jesus. Uh, Jared Leto, Joker Jesus. You watched that for an hour, an hour and a half before they pulled the plug and realized, hey... Kids don't want to see grim dark superheroes. They want to watch Tom and Jerry. So it comes out next week. I want to watch this. I feel it's an obligation for Pat to watch this, to comment on this. All four hours, I will sit through this. Scorsese, I'm sorry, buddy. I got to do it. It's not art, but I got I to gotta watch it. Four hours. Yeah, you can watch it and tell me all about it. I, I should get hazard pay, Ian, for watching it. <laughs> I, I may all live tweet it. All right, that's it for the intro. That's, that's it. it.